This month's watercolor cards tutorial is all about beautiful feathers. Now there are three simple steps. First we paint the feather, then we erase our outline and add a few details, and finally we lift some of the paper to capture that airiness, that lightness. These are perfect for Father's Day, so let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and we're gonna start with a quick supply rundown. So I always have these blank greeting cards um, and then I cut pieces of watercolor paper to fit the card. So you don't wanna paint right on cardstock. It's just not gonna look good. You wanna use proper watercolor paper, either hot pressed or cold pressed. And then for brushes, I am using a number four synthetic round brush and a number, I think this is a double zero, like a super small synthetic round brush, just any kind of little detail brush like that will do and I have a palette two glasses of clean water some paper towel for blotting and then I'm using Payne's gray Prussian blue and raw umber those are the three colors that I'm going to use for the entirety of the project um, these are the Cotman series watercolors from Windsor and Newton I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on my palette and that's what I'll be working with um, the majority of the feathers will be painting out in that Payne's gray. So I'm just mixing in lots and lots and lots and lots of water to make it really, really light. Um, and I'm just gonna sort of prep my paints. Um, this feathers project, it's good to have some scrap paper nearby so that you can really test your color because you don't want dark gray. You want super, super, super light gray. And of course you can mix up some colors. Uh, the mixing the gray and the blue makes this really beautiful stone gray that's great for the feathers. And before we start painting, I just wanted to say that for my patrons of the channel, you can print today's greeting card over on Patreon. All the channel bonus content is available there. Okay, let's talk about how to actually create these. They are not hard, there's just a bunch of steps. And I start by doing a pencil line, um, and then you wanna just make sure there's lots of space around it, lots of negative space, space for the feather and space for beyond the feather, the border around the feather. Um, so just <laughs> lay down that line, first things first. Then we're taking this super light gray and our number four round brush, and we're just making these simple linear strokes. And uh, you're just not going to touch that pencil line. All of the strokes lay around it, um, but they don't touch it. And I'm just sort of creating the shape of the feather, which a feather could be like any shape, so don't worry about it too much. I'm creating the shape with these vertical strokes. And uh, some of the strokes are really thin, others are thick. You can see I'm letting them all bleed together here at the top. So I've used a bit more of a watery paint at the top. And that's because I'm going to release some color into that wet area. So I'm using that mix of gray and blue that I mixed up and I'm just allowing it to kind of seep out. And I'm using my brush to help guide it out into that wet area. And I'll continue doing those thin strokes strokes sort of moving away from that pencil line giving me this really nice sort of look of the feather and of all its little parts. I'm uh, adding just a little more of that Prussian blue there just for some variance and um, yeah it's very very perfectly imperfect. Very wabi-sabi. If you're thinking it's looking a little weird right now trust me it's gonna get there we just have a few more steps to go. I am going to um, set this one aside in a sec here and we'll let it dry and then I'm going to take you through the whole process again uh, with two more feathers so that you can really see what I'm talking about. So we start again we've got a nice little piece of watercolor paper cut to size and I'm going to start with two lines this time again leave lots of space around them so that you have some negative space when you're done the card you don't want two giant feathers filling the whole thing it's not going to look as sophisticated um, and I'm doing these really free strokes trying to make the shape of the feather and I'm using a very light gray. You, I can't stress that enough. I had gray a few times that was a bit dark and it was like, ugh, it's so heavy. It, it sort of takes away from the, that very light look of the feather. Um, so I'm doing the same thing here where I've allowed for a little bit more of a wet blended area at the top and then I'm releasing some blue into that area so there's this nice colored tip to this feather. The second feather here we're going to do a different sort of color uh, with the brown in the center of the feather, feather so that will be nice and I'm leaving lots of space around that pencil line so nothing is touching my pencil line in the middle 
and you can kind of play around with the uh, wet area a little if you want to or you can just do the simple strokes maybe add a little bit of a darker gray um, but you don't need to get too detailed here there's lots more steps after this where we're gonna add detail so simple very very light gray creating the shape of the feather with those uh, vertical strokes, maybe a little bit more dark gray, and then we add in our color portion, whether it's on the tip or we add a stripe of color, and you can do it by releasing the color into a wet area, or you can just do it by doing these very free, quick strokes. Either way, it's going to look nice. You can layer, continue to darken. Don't darken the gray too much, but if you wanna add darkness to the brown and the blue. And then those ones we're gonna let dry. And this one I just wanted to share with you. This was a practice one that I was working on. And uh, I just wanted to show you how light that gray really needs to be. And also how important negative space is, not only around the feathers, but also within them. I've left a lot of white space here. And you can see there, you know, it's all about what's in between the details. That counts too. So. It, uh, just do less, do less here and it will do so much more for you. Okay, here we are. These are dried, so now I'm taking an eraser and I'm erasing that pencil line. If you've stayed clear of that initial line when you um, erase, you should have this nice line of negative space right down the center of the feather. Now we're gonna take a little bit more dark gray and we're going to start adding more details to the feather. Now that it's dry, we can do a little wet on dry and add some really thin lines. Just do those quick strokes away from the, the quill in the center, always moving outward from center will give you these nice very free thin strokes and I'm using my detail brush here and then what I want to do is just paint a line down the center but not where the uh, pencil line was you want to go right up against the left hand side of the um, painted portion of the feather as I've done here um, and then you can add as many little details as you want for this painting I decided to sort of paint in both sides of the quill um, and I don't know if that was as successful. The quill can just be a single light gray line and that's what I'm going to do here. So for these ones, I'm sort of warming up by adding a little more detail to the feathers. And then once I'm like, okay, I know how much paint is on my brush, I'm feeling good. Then I go in and I just add this nice single line and uh, that's all there is to it. Like a single line is all you really need. We can assume that the other side of the quill is just um, lost in highlight. And that's what I'm going to do here. So a single gray line, it can just come to a point, it can end anywhere. Um, so don't overthink it. So much of these feathers is all about that less is more. And um, I definitely was too heavy handed with some of my practice ones and they turn out fine, but it's just, when you see that negative space and that really light gray, I think that's when you really capture that, the beauty of the feather. And I'm just adding a little bit more dark blue and dark gray. So just continuing forward, adding details with a light hand. <laughs> and um, these ones are almost done. And after this, we are going to let them dry again. And then we just have one last step. So there's three key steps here. And the final step, now these have dried, it took about 15 minutes, is to uh, create some more um, contrast within our feather and some more lightness and some more airiness. And we are going to do that by lifting some of the paper. I have a nice sharp X-Acto knife here and I am just running it across the rough watercolor paper. I run it towards me and I pull up a little bit of the paper and it comes up in a very sort of, imperfect way and that is fine. You can see when I get really, really close, the knife kind of skips along the paper and it creates these broken lines. And I think that works really well for the feather. After you're uh, happy with what you've done with the knife, you're going to take a good gum eraser, a soft eraser, and erase all over the feather. And it's sort of like sanding with a rough sandpaper and then a smooth sandpaper. So we take the knife and we get the look right and then we just erase and we pick up all of that loose paper and we get rid of it all and we end up with this smooth card with this light and airy feather design. 
So if you're creating these, just follow those three simple steps. First, paint the feather. Step two, erase that pencil quill and add more details. And step three is simply lifting off some of that paper with a little knife. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you'll give this a try. And don't forget, you can print my card over on Patreon. Have a great weekend and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.